Um, so hello, happy Sunday, fun day. Um, there's nothing better than blowing a conch. Um, and I'm excited because there's a whole bunch of conchs and shells behind um, Gong Maestro and Sounding Shell creator, proprietor, um, Aiden McIntyre. I had the great honor of having Aiden and Don, my dad, uh, Gong and Conk my wedding in 1997 Ooh. reception. And then I had even a greater honor to come and do the Gong Master training with the two of them for 10 days in Gong's house in 2003. Um, and the thing I love about Aiden is he's so passionate about um, these incredible instruments coming from the ocean. Um, and he has a, a great deal of respect towards uh, the creature that lived in here prior and this incredible gift that they've given us in terms of being able to utilize it for, for ritual and healing purposes. So without further ado, I'm going to uh, mute myself. And Aiden, t take it away, my friend. Uh, I missed that. All I heard was uh, Aiden is so passionate and that's, that's it. It cut out. So if it cuts out during the, um, the event, don't worry. Uh, I hope it'll come back soon. All right. <laughs> well, here I am at home in the, in the Cotswolds and I'm in my shed of all places. Um, GMT is going to be, was going to be in just a, a few weeks time really. And at the Gong Master Training in Hawkwood College, uh, we have a special teacher, John Birdsong, who teaches us uh, about the conch shells. He's a trumpet player and a virtuoso on, uh, he's a music, uh, what do you call a musicologist and a composer and jazz musician. And he was going to take the class. Now, typically I would take the class as well. And with me, I bring to the gong master training at Hawkwood College, approximately about 100, 108 conch shells. So it takes me one year to collect these conch shells from various different sources, from people who um, liquidate their shell collections, from eBay, uh, from charity shops is a really good place too. And uh, you can buy conch shells online. So it takes a long time because they're not just like in a supermarket, you can go and pick one off a shelf like this. So it's my job to collect all the shells for the Gong Master training at Hawkwood College and bring them there to the college so that every student has at least a choice of, of one or two shells when they take the shells into the forest to play them. We teach you to play the conch shell and then you take those conch shells and with a couple of other people, you go into the nature and you play the conch shell and you learn the different ways to use it. So this is a wonderful thing to have in any workshop. And I don't know many workshops which can, uh, which will have so many gongs, so many conks, so many singing bowls. Unfortunately, because of this uh, present situation, uh, Hawkwood had to postpone our gong master training. This year, it would have been the 25th year of our training. Uh, Don and I, we've been doing the training for 25 years. And so this was a special year this year. But as you can imagine, everything got cancelled. So here we are in my shed with all the conch shells I would have taken to the workshop. For your, uh, for your uh, pleasure, I can play the conch shells, can talk about the different ones, uh, something like that, yeah. I'd like to open it up with any questions from anybody, so that's a good place to start. Oh, no, no sound, no sound. <coughs> ah, there. Hello, Debbie. Hi, Aiden. Hi, <laughs> Debbie. Can you, can you hear me okay? <laughs> yeah. I had difficulty finding how to get on. <laughs> so yeah, well, you're on now. I'm a few minutes late. Um, oh, I don't okay. have any, I don't have a question straight away. Um, no, that's okay. But I'm good really, to see you. yes, really good to see all of you. <laughs> and great to be here. Hello. Yeah. 
I actually I can't see everybody. Let's see if I can see. Put everybody. yourself on gallery view. Oh, there is it. There, I, I see now. Yes. Okay. okay. Um, I, it's not more of a question, but what I'm really keen on is um, living vicariously through you and having you go through the various shells and playing them so we can hear what they sound like and then just telling us a little bit about like where 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 are the shells originally from and and I would love for you to kind of talk us through how you make them all right then I can do that for sure uh, one thing is that I shared a couple of photographs to uh, your your um, social media of a map of the world and also a description uh, of w different areas where the conch shell comes from. They're basically, they come, uh, they, in the north of the planet, Russia, Alaska, and then different strips. So they're uh, different strips. So the same shell that you might get in California, you might also see in Florida. And you might also see in um, West Africa and East Africa and so on and so forth. So the shells can be from the different latitudes of the globe. Aiden, oh, I'm, yeah. showing, I'm sharing it yeah. right now. Well, uh, like, right now. as you see, yeah, you see there, and there's the, uh, the difference the California, the Caribbean, and uh, the, um, the Australian area is south, also South America, Chile. And um, and what have we got there? We've got the uh, Florida. There's a, a beautiful shell comes from Florida, which is the uh, which is the horse conch. It's difficult for me to get in here in England, but I, I sometimes I buy on the internet. Although the postage sometimes costs more than the shell, mm -hmm. but the shell itself is a beautiful shell. And I have a couple here that uh, that I I got. I wonder, um, um, Hal, you're in New York, correct? Yes. So you're like right here. I, Don and I are here in California. Uh, Dee, Deborah, where are you guys? Betty. I'm from the UK, near Aden. I'm an hour from Aden. So you guys are yeah, right over right. here. Yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm UK near Aden. I'm in Camming, Dursley. So we oh, have- Oh, Dursley, you're in Dursley. Yeah. Well, oh, you you're near me. Yeah. yeah. Good so yeah, so good. so basically the shells that we have over here, you can also find in Asia. The shells yes. that you have in UK, Correct. Hal can also get. Uh huh. And then you've got the transatlantic uh -huh. going over here. This is a very interesting part. The most shells you'll see Madagascar and all around India and Borneo and Fiji and those areas and northern Australia. Now this shell here is from Northern Australia. This is the con this is the this is the syrinx. And a lot of people can anybody everybody see this? A lot of people really like this shell hmm. because it, it's not only it's ergonomically designed. It has a handle, and you can hold it, uh, which is very handy when you're playing the conch shell. Uh, it's a lovely shell, and they grow. This is the largest gastropod in the world. And up here on the top shelf, I'll play it before we leave, is, the, is the, my biggest shell. It's uh, two feet uh, long. So it is absolutely huge. And sounds like the Queen Mary. Wow. We're coming into port. It's very <laughs> deep. Yeah, it's very, 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 very deep. And it's, it's a ceremonial conch shell. So actually at the workshops, we don't often pick it up. It sits on a high stool mm. on a cushion and you bend down and blow it while it's still in its place because it's quite heavy. It's got to weigh wow. seven, eight kilos, I think. I don't, I'm not sure how much it weighs, but it's very heavy. But this beautiful conch uh, comes in different sizes. And uh, it's a, this is, at the moment, this is the biggest one I have uh, uh, available for sale. And this is uh, very large. Incidentally, if somebody's interested in getting a conch shell, a good way to do that is to go on my Facebook page called Sounding Shells, and there you will see nine mandalas, nine tables. On each table, there are 12 conch shells. So 
a total of 108 conch shells there and they're put like a clock you will see them the largest one is 12 and the smallest one would be this one here this one here and that would be number one so if you would like a conch shell go on my sounding clip uh, page and uh, sounding shell page and see have a look at them and see what appeals to you you've got to start somewhere so a good way is visuals can i ask you a question so between those two shells in your hand um yes. what would be the price range between the smallest and the largest okay okay this one here would be at 290 and i'll play it see this part here the, 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 so no, I the, the, bit, the larger the, the bell here inside this chamber the deeper the shell would be okay. and um, this one Aiden wait Aiden one second I I have a little technical thing that I want to just throw out because we're a small group um, when you play the conch I think it's important that we mute each ourselves because then it, we, we lose the sound because it goes to someone's background noise. So I think the best thing to do is when you want to play it, um, people can self mute or I can just mute us all so we can really hear it well. And then we okay. can unmute and talk about it. Okay. Okay. Sounds good. I do have a little you, tiny, you, yes, here. Will you blow the small one as well? Yes, I do have this little tiny, tiny, tiny Australian syrinx here. This little tiny one here. But these, this is on the mandala on the Facebook page, and it's this one. And we the measure. Yes, I will. And just to, just to let you know, this shell here, I have my ruler here. This measures 10 inches long. It's 10 inches now. Ready? Yeah. So this one here is 10 inches long. This Can you try blowing here. it towards your iPad? Uh, yes, sure. This okay. one here is 19 inches, this one. Uh, blow it towards the iPad. I didn't want to blast everybody's ears, but no problem. How much is that one? This, one here, this would be 85. Okay. And then there's a tiny one here, this one here. This is even smaller. It's an Australian syrinx. It's not on the, the page and it's, it's very up there, it's quite high, the little tiny ones. And I think for sound therapy, you want something a little deeper. We have, but uh, I think a collection of conch shells is a good idea myself. One conch shell is, is okay, but it's good to have a couple then you have a lot high one and a low one. Can I ask a uh, question? Absolutely. Who's that? Debbie, Me. yes. Um, I'm wondering um, when, this, when the shell is larger or smaller, um, yeah. does it take, I'm trying to figure out how to word it. Does it take different, different skills to blow a larger one or a smaller one? No, no, no. And it's the same exact, it's like riding a bicycle. You ride it, whether it's a small bicycle or a large, but you still have to turn the pedal. You blow the same. 
for example, you have the um, the big helmet conch. This is this one. Now, as you see, this is very large. It has a huge chamber in here, but it doesn't mean that I have to blow the shell harder to get a. In fact, you just have to relax a little bit more to blow the the uh, the helmet conch. This is the helmet conch. See, I'm very relaxed. I'm not like. It's not like you don't have to be dizzy Gillespie to blow this one. Okay. But you can really feel it. And if you blow it to your, for yourself, if you want to do some conch healing on yourself, can you see me? So you, you face the, the opening here to your body and then you blow. But it's exactly the same technique and it doesn't take any extra puff to blow this huge one or, well, maybe, maybe the smaller shells, you need to be a little bit more precise, a little bit tighter in the lips. Yeah, it's, it, you have to just put your lips right and with the larger ones it's a little looser and, and deeper. But it's the same technique. You, it's not about blowing at all. The conch shell is not about air inside. It's about noise with your lips. Once you make this sound, you put this sound into the shell. So there's, if you notice, I'm not blowing the shell like that. It's just a steady, I'm going. I'm just making a sound and that sound is going into the shell and then it's amplified with inside the shell. Yes, it's. I've got. I've got a helmet shell, like the large one that you that you've um, just the the big that one, and I've noticed that I've got different sounds that come from it, um, depending on how I blow it. Yeah. Right. And yeah, sometimes yeah, they sound. Sometimes they do sound fuller. Sometimes they sound muffled, and that was why I was asking about that. Uh huh. It's a little. It's just a te your technique. Uh, do you like the, the the muffled sound? I do. Um, I was. It's a very deep sound, and I, I really love it. But I'm thinking about getting maybe a mid range sound. I'm thinking, uh -huh. looking at something more like that. The the syrinx shell. I think that's a good idea. Yeah. The syrinx, the syrinx is a is a good all round shell, and the the, the triton, of course, the triton is a is is a ah. fabulous shell. Um, this is uh, this also, if you notice, it has a large chamber here, very large chamber, and uh, so you also get a deep. This is C. I try and uh, put a note on every shell. I've not completed the noting of all the shells, but the, you can see uh, here I've got a, a C here in the, in the corner there. So I, I, I tune them, find a, what note they are and then write it on here. This is the C, uh, um, Triton Trumpet. <laughs> That's a lovely clear deep sound, Triton. The larger you get, the, the lower it gets. Where would, that, where would that Triton come from? What part of the world? This one uh, is from uh, Indo, Pacific. So the Pacific and uh, also Indonesia. Okay. This one here. And uh, well, that's Pacific. Well, hmm? well, how much would those tritons go for from your small to large tritons? Uh, do you want me to price every? I uh, can't price everyone, but no, approximately. No, range. About. So, yeah. Do you have an idea? One, 
here's the here's the small triton little triton here yeah mm -hmm. tiny <laughs> You sometimes have to turn the shell like this way, rotate it till you find the right place to blow. Because it in certain shells, you know, you have to find the optimum place. So I think that's it. So this little baby, which is so beautiful, it's 75. The tritons are rarer. They're harder to find. But I have here is a bit of an ugly duckling. I have some ugly duckling shells, okay? I have some beautiful top of the line, uh, magnificent collector's items. You would say, like this triton here, the color, this is from the Atlantic. It's heavier than the others. It has a nice uh, opening there, beautiful coloring. So one like that would be more than, than this one compared to like this one. Where is it? Uh, this one here. This is a beautiful shell, beautiful coloring. And uh, inside too, you pay more for that one than you might for this one which is also a nice shell, but as you see, I'm sorry, I, I've got to get the camera right. As you see, it's not as quite as beautiful, you see, but it still has a nice opening. And this is what it sounds like. So this would be 65. This is number two on the Triton table on sounding shells. And I've got also some ugly ducklings that don't look very nice. I like the fact that if it's ugly, it's cheaper, but the sound is fantastic. That's yeah, scary. exactly. Now here's one here. It's like a Triton. It's black. And marked and do you see the inside mm -hmm. it's pretty ugly it's 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 been knocked around a bit it's lost a lot of its color and that's know. a triton this is yes this is a, a triton wow it looks completely different to the others it's got no color it's lost all it's, it's bleached yeah it's bleached out and it's got some uh well, it's got some uh, bits of fossiling things. Can you see it here? This stuck to it. What does that sound like? You can play it. You see? So you get this, the same sound, but visually, it's not as beautiful. And when you buy them, of course, you buy the, the, the ones that are the ugly ducklings, you buy, get them a little cheaper. And here's one here. It's a type of a, like a, let's see, can you see that? It's a little one and it's got these uh, growths, like worm castings and things on it. Can you see that? Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, I like it. It's a bit small. But it still sounds good. You never know how old these shells are. They all look the same uh, within reason. Uh, a shell like this could be 100 years old and it could be 20 years old. You just don't know. So for anyone who's just now joined us, um, I just want to let you know that in the chat box, I provided the files that Aiden is sharing. Um, there's some book references, a collector's um, for collecting and learning. And there's a whole PDF, I think it's a hundred pages um, of conch information as well. Um, so just so you know, I'm putting some notes and files um, for everyone. 
That is a beautiful book, that, that uh, PDF. I shared it a couple of weeks ago. It's really informative and a very scholarly work all about the conch shell through the ages from 3,000 plus years ago. It's a great thing to download. Uh, yes, Lola. Uh, so I have this shell. Yeah. I do, I do seashell readings. So wow, that's a nice shell. Yes. Wow, so, that is fantastic. I love but, it. But this needs to be drilled out, right? No, you don't want to drill that. No. Uh, put you... it to, let's see it. Yeah, how, let's show it to the people. Yeah, that way. You see how nice large chamber she's got. Now the other side. Show, show the other side, please. Yeah, and just hold, hold let go of your hand, uh, the, the, your right hand. Yeah, and turn it a little bit. Yeah, you see how she, that's got a nice skirt that goes around it. And you yeah. see the ripples on it that are created by the, 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 the movement of the ocean. Yeah. Don's mm -hmm. waving. <laughs> so yeah, now you need to know how to cut it. Yeah. I guess, I, I don't know. This is, I yeah, collect, I collect seashells because I do yeah. seashell readings. I so, don't, so what, what, what does what that mean? do with them so i have a deck of cards 200 cards with the meanings of the animals that live in the shells this lady she's got a program so she actually gave this to me because she moved from massachusetts down to georgia i think it's georgia now but Very she had she had a collection like you of all these shells that and she took pictures of them and they're in the deck so now um you know, when I saw the conch shell reading opportunity, I'm like, now, like, because one thing leads to another, to another, to another. Uh -huh. And I, so, how, I don't know, does this have to be drilled out? No, don't drill it. So, okay, here we have, it's not quite the same, but it's the same um, genus, it's the same style. Here we have the queen conch. This is the cheaper of all the conks to buy. And this is traditionally, it would be the one that your grandmother has in the bathroom that she does for 25 years. And it sits in the bathroom and it looks beautiful and it's nice and pink inside. And everybody loves the queen conch. And it's actually the cheaper of all the conks because there's so many of them. Now, this is probably maybe from the Caribbean. And, uh, you know, the daughter goes on holiday and brings a the parents or the granny are a present and it might be one like this. So this is similar to the one you've got. The uh -huh. one you've got is very beautiful. Thank it's very, you. it's yeah. very large for yeah. it because yeah. the queen conks, uh, they do come large. Here's one that's kind of similar to yours. It's, 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 it has a similar size um, chamber here. It's lovely. I haven't cut this yet. So this is waiting to be cut. But it's a lovely shell. It has this lovely skirt that goes around with the ripples. It's, it's a beautiful shell. I can't wait to hear what it sounds like. But this is probably 50 years old. It's never spoken. It's never sang or anything. And it's very exciting to, to remove the apex of the shell. You have to remove it. And then, of course, you can blow into it. And for the first time in its life, this this shell, which is inanimate, it has, it, it, once upon a time, it had something inside. Now, it ha you can make it an instrument. It's really magic. So what you do, Lola, you see the shell? Where is the camera? Oh, here. You see the shell there? Yeah. You count the spirals. One. Can you see me? Two. Yeah. Three. Three spirals down. Yeah? Yeah. And then you can get a piece of, of uh, masking tape and put it around so you, uh, it's even. And there's a temptation to go with the spiral, but don't do that. Put it around so that it's exactly the same on all sides. Yeah? Yeah. Okay. And then you, it's a good idea, for example, you could take the shell to a, a workshop, mechanics workshop, where they have a bandsaw. A bandsaw. Yeah. And you have to, the, the, the powder is carcinogenic. 
Right, so, so they wear masks. Mask and it's good goggles. Yeah. I actually yeah. wear mask goggles, yeah. ear earplugs and a hat and yeah. I dress up quite quite uh, you know, I look after that part of things. So then you could with a band saw, you can push it and you can cut it. <clears throat> then after you've cut it, let's see if I have one here that is halfway done. I'm not sure that I do. Yeah, here. <clears throat> now here you see a shell which has been cut. Okay, now look closely at the, the, the hole. You see? Yeah. This isn't ready to blow because it has all this matrix here. Then that has to be removed, all that stuff. Do you sand it down? No, the best way to do it, I've found, is with a, a, a drill with a little stone. Uh, it's like a, a grinding stone, but it's, you put it at the end of the drill. It's shaped like a, a cone. You know, it's shaped like a cone. <clears throat> so you'd put the cone into the opening here, there. You see that opening? You see that opening there? Because it is open. I can blow through it, but I can't, I can't get a sound out of that. Right, right. You have to open it more. Oh. More until it looks like, uh, you know, uh, for example, let's see, uh, it looks like uh, this one. You're drilling, you're kind of drilling an internal circle on it. You're drilling, drilling a little bit, yeah, like that. Okay. I see now. But it has to, it has to go in yeah, with a spiral. Yeah, yeah. So it's delicate. You have to do it surgically. You can't just plunge it in there. <laughs> you drill it out carefully. Why is that funny, Lola? <laughs> the way you said it, you can't just plunge it in there. <laughs> no, it's a very delicate job. Because a, a shell like this that costs a... It's very expensive. Yeah. You can slip and ruin it. I know. That's why I'm not going to do that. I just wanted to like... In, inside not... here is like an eggshell. Yeah. Once you get, once you get inside the shell, the, the compartments, the spiral compartments, is as thin as an eggshell. And some of them, the Triton especially, it's even thinner than an eggshell. Yeah. So uh, you have to be very delicate. Once you go through to the wrong, to the next spiral, it doesn't play as well. I, I totally understand your professionalism. I'd rather buy one than ruin my beautiful shell. I just wanted to like, I have my energy around me and it's, it's amazing, you know, um, everything. Well, you can, you can always send it to me and I'll cut it for you and send it back. Oh God, do you know how much in postage this is going to cost to go over the pond? Yeah, about yeah. 60 <laughs> quid, 60 bucks, 60, well, 70 I might, well, bucks. I might as well buy one from you, you know, that's what I'm, it's, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Thank and return that one to the bathroom shelf. <laughs> well, I actually have it in my yoga room. Oh, how beautiful. Yeah. It's very inspiring. A shell yeah. like that is beautiful. And yeah. that particular shell is in perfect condition. Yes, it is. The, 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 the lady that ha gave it to me, she's been collecting for like 30, 40 years. She's got a business right. with, with the seashell readings. And so yes. I'm yes. listening to what shells you are using. The different conchs have different animals. The helmet is like a protector. Those, those, those shells, the animals in there are about protection. Well, I, I'm very interested and maybe at some future date, Lola, you can let me, you can, we can talk on the Facebook yeah. about that because I've been interested. Here, here I want to show you is a Triton trumpet with the, with the end complete, totally complete. It's so fine here. It's very rare. It's quite expensive to get a shell 
to buy a shell with a complete, uh, absolutely to the very end. Uh, it's such a lovely shell. I'm not going to cut this. It's too much. It, I, 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 don't, I, I, I'll just save it as an example to show the students, you know, because <laughs> if I cut it, I would lose that much. I would lose that much of that shell and you wouldn't see how beautiful it is. So Aiden, how much, how much would that one be worth whole? This one here? Yeah. As a, as a, uh, as a collector's piece. Yes. Yes. Yeah. What's it worth to you? To me, it's, well, it's difficult, but, uh, 200 pound. Okay. With, without being cut at all. <clears throat> yeah. Yeah, something like that. Yeah. This is, is especially nice, nice example. That one is especially. Here's another one here, which, which would be more because it's totally massive. Oh my gosh. It's, 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 ni it's neither cut either. Wow. It's really huge. I mean, for a Triton, this is very, very rare to get a Triton. I mean, this, this could be 75 years old or something. Wow. It's, it's, it's very, so I haven't cut it. What's and the, I've got, you've got a large this, one that size that is cut though, do you? Oh yes, oh yeah. This size? Yeah. Would be this one. Cause I'm curious what that, the large one of that sounds like. This one is the most magnificent. These two here, these are huge, and this one is probably, this is B plus, B plus, okay. yeah. And it's from, uh, let me see, the Philippines. And just look at how beautiful it is inside. Oh yeah. You see, you see the, uh, the light? Yeah, because it's so, very thin, isn't it? It's very thin. And this is what it looks like here. And I'll blow that for you. It's like little tiger stripes, isn't it, in the opening? In the opening, some of them have this tiger stripe here, mm. but some of them don't have that so, so defined. Mm. Here's one here. It has very pale, it's very pale. Yeah. Yeah, but this one is especially nice inside, and it sounds like this. Put it nearer to the iPad, Aiden. Bring it nearer to us, because we can't hear it very well. There, like that. This one would be this one. Now this one, as you can see, probably it's paler. It's like it's got this. It's possible you could possibly polish this, but do you see how pale it's gone? Mm. Underneath this, you see, you see how the color comes out when you wet it. So this one here could do with a little polish. It also has a little stain inside there. Do you see that little white stain? I can only imagine it's um, uh, some kind of uh, lime from the water. But it's a nice large shell and it sounds like this. Don was here because if Don was here he would be uh, me and him would be blowing together and we get two matching shells and create a beautiful connection you know with the shell uh, we'd have that um, 
by by neural Oh, you've oh, got one try, there. Try. I don't know. Let's try it. What, I don't what know. note is it? It's what a, note is it? It, uh, it? She doesn't have a note on it. Uh, oh, what a so shame. But I, I, you Wait. can hear it. You can yeah. hear it. Uh, let's see. How big is it, Don? Wait, I'll get the same. I'll get the same. I have one here. Ouch. No, I must say that... Uh, when you get your shells, some of them tend to break off. This is very dangerous. They were used in the ancient days. They would uh, file the teeth off the conch so they get their hand all the way in, and it became a uh, instrument of paka paka, you know. So uh, this is what they would do with these teeth here, so they get the hand all the way in. I don't need to do that with this shell because I can put my hand over here and go walk out, walk out uh -huh, like that uh -huh, too. So I it's see. not totally lost, uh, uh -huh. but I don't want to get my hand stuck in there. Here, <laughs> I don't think that's going to happen, Doug. Here, see this jagged anyway. edge? This is very um, mm, difficult to have. And, this is uh, a nice what, shell and yours uh, is a edge, nice shell. You, might, you might, might just tell people if their shell breaks off like that. Yeah, just get some sandpaper. You can sand it off and just... Oh, yeah, my, sand it down. I had shells that started big and they became smaller and smaller in that way. Yeah. But some sand of the people it. are putting a metal, uh, I don't know what it is, like a gold or well, something. Well, yeah, some, I have and, seen and it, that, like a, a piece of metal around the edge, you can do that. Uh, you can just sandpaper that's smooth. Sandpaper yeah. is smooth. Yeah, just around here. This is, do you see how the, the helmet is like the sun? It's quite... Nice the way it's like a cartoon sun. Yeah. I like it. So let's see, uh, Don. Let's see. Do you want to try? Is this big. is the same size as yours, I think. Is it really? I don't know well, how many. I put it there. This is... Okay. Yeah. Ready? Ready? Um... It's not quite, but listen, listen, I'll do mine and then pick a conch that has this note. Ready? Right. Yeah. Okay, you got a conch that sounds sound? terrible. <laughs> I like, can I just, I have to interject for a second. I like how optimistic the gong masters, maestros, Aiden and Don are thinking that on Zoom, this is possible. That's hysterical. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Okay. Okay. <laughs> yeah, one true. at a time. One at one at a time, gentlemen. One at a time. Yeah. Well, well this it doesn't have a note on it. These creatures would go very, very <laughs> slow, but now they zoom. I think this is good. <laughs> now they zoom, yeah. Cool. <laughs> Aiden. Um, Aiden. Yes. So I have, I have this conch. It's yeah. The conch family. It's I think it's a spider conch yeah. or something. Yeah, that's the spider conch. Here's one. Now, in order to make this sing, you have to chop off this these protrusions. So you cut it straight across and lose these ones. Oh, no, 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 that's not happening. <laughs> no. <laughs> well. It's too beautiful to cut. <laughs> well, you have an instrument then. Here is a spider conch which isn't cut off. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, and you see there's no hole in it. It's just, it's not been cut that. This one, on the other hand, has been cut. So you see, I yeah. cut the two top spikes off and that enables me to play it. And to my mind, a shell you can play is twice the shell that you don't play. <laughs> oh. Yeah, it's like a very that. nice shell, very powerful yeah. shell that. Yes. And it's a nice shape. 
it's these things are an acquired taste. Some people won't don't like this because you can maybe put your eye out with it. But anyway, that's the spider conch. Or it's also a sounding shell and a personal self-defense uh, yeah. instrument as well. A knuckle, <laughs> knuckle duster. Yeah, here's a here's a baby one. Ooh. The spider conch. Beautiful. Yeah, this is tiny. I have some miniature shells here. Another popular, the most popular is the queen conch, and I've probably got more of these than any any shell. More of these. They're a lovely shell. They're very common a garden, if you like, but they still make a really nice, <laughs> strong sound. And one of these would cost like seventy-five, and going down, I've got some smaller ones for fifty. Uh, I've got some very very tiny ones. This is a, a small one. It's uh, it's quite nice. Uh, it's a little bit rough around them. But when I when I if somebody wants to buy this, what I do, I look at it um, closely and say, is it rough? And I take care of it. This one, as you see, I don't know whether you can see that though. Yeah. Can you yeah. see? You can can see. you see how it, it's rough? Yeah. So what I do, I take a little bit of plaster of Paris uh -huh. and I, I, with a delicate uh, tool, I fill in that, those holes. Plaster of Paris dries very hard and uh, then I reshape it so that when you go to blow it, it doesn't hurt your lips. Have, and you, tried any, Venetian, have you tried Venetian plaster? Uh, no, plaster of Paris, I only use that because it dries so fast. Okay. A uh, Venetian plaster, that is a special thing, and I don't have any of that. I can go to my hardware store and get plaster of Paris. Everybody has it, so Venetian plaster is a little bit uh, <laughs> posh. I I've worked with it. That's why I was asking you. Yeah, you, whatever you use, you could do it. There is also this you can use. This is, um, this is here, this, this. Can you read that? Do you see what it beeswax. is? Beeswax. Is that pure beeswax? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's beeswax. And you get a pan like this, <laughs> and you put it in, in the pan, not like that, but you know, you cut a piece off and you warm it on the stove. And then you can uh, pour it onto a piece of marble, if you have one handy, or a cold stone or a, a cutting board and you cool it down and then you roll it and get a little uh, worm of, um, of beeswax, soft, and you form it around the top of the shell. You, you, you can make a little slit with a knife and you just drop, put it on the top of the shell. And if a shell has been cut too much and it's too big, it'll, you can make it smaller with the beeswax or softer to blow with. So that's, that's a handy thing to have. And uh, maybe Debbie has quite a lot of this. <laughs> I have beehives. Bee <laughs> that's a bee why. Keeper, so this is like no problem for you. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So that's also a good tip. And before they go out of my shell shack here and I sell them, I sand down and make sure it's all smooth. And uh, these, these, uh, these knuckles, I call them knuckles. I don't know what the name is for them. Sometimes they're broken and I make, I don't know whether you can see that, I made them like flat so that they're not sharp. So uh, you don't need them sharp. So this one is a little shell. <laughs> Quite high, but they're very reasonably priced. What else haven't we talked about? We haven't talked about this shell. This is a lacy shell. I don't know whether you can see how nice the coloring is. It's, it's quite lacy and a lot of knuckles on it. This is called the frog conch, frog. 
and uh, they've got a nice uh, opening there for you to blow in. And they don't grow very big. The biggest one I have is this one, and this uh, this is the this is the other one. And this one is uh, the biggest one I've found. Um, this is the biggest to get. I don't think they get any bigger than that. So I have, I have a few more of this size. This size. This this sounds like this. You see, you can't tell what I'm blowing. I could blow anything, and they all mm. sound more or less the same. Not the same, but one's deeper, one's one's um, um, higher. But it's, it's preference of what, like you do conch shell magic there. And it's, it's what you want, what appeals to you. You know, what, what makes you think, wow, this is a beautiful thing. I'm going to use this in my sound therapy. So you, you find something that uh, uh, you relate to. Some people use a pendulum over the mandalas to find out what their shell is. And that helps them choose. In the first place, it's just how it looks, really, how, the look of it, what, what you want. So this is the frog conch. But this is one of my favorites. This is beautiful female helmet conch. Now you notice on the male helmet conch, you've got these big knuckles, it's like the, the sun, they come out very, very big knuckles and there's one where's the other one anyway you can see let's see oh here like don's shell so this would be the male and female so the knuckles on the female are soft and more gentle these things here these here but it's still got a large chamber the hey, chambers hey, hey. What's the name Very of large. The, what is the name of that shell? This is the helmet conch. Helmet. Helmet, but it's yeah. soft. And it's because of this chamber here, it's low. Yeah. That one. Here's another one that's a little bit more colorful. This one. This is a handy traveling shell because it's so compact and yet you get that kind of low sound with it. I like this and it's lightweight too. I like that shell very much. It's a how, nice much shell. how much are those, Aiden? These? Yes. Well, they would start, the, the, this, I've got very small ones and uh, the largest one I've got would be uh, 125, 125. The, let's see which one is that. This is that one. This would be larger. It's stuck. Ah, oh, it won't come out. There. So it doesn't look much larger. But that's larger. That's 125. And that, that's uh, number 10 on the table. Number 10. And the table of this is number one, I think. Number The first table. This one, and this is you'll see it number 10. But then there's this, after that one, you've got this guy here. This is a tiny one, tiny, uh -huh. nice, but small. They don't vary much in size, but this is kind of kind of smaller. And uh, uh, I think this one, I got this. This is also small. Still nice. This is number one on the table. Uh, number one, I think. Yeah. So that, then you can look on the table and see. How much is the number one, the small one? The tiny one, this one here. Mm -hmm. Could do that at like 35, 40.
Zarine. Do you know Zarine? She bought one of these from me. There's also this sound. Don't forget this sound. Oh, it's raining. <laughs> that's not it. That's, that's quite common. Eh? And so, yeah, and what other shells have we not discussed? Uh, oh, you find these on the internet. I got this by default. It looks very nice, but it's very, very difficult to cut it. It's very hard. It's very heavy. And they don't come very large. It's, a, it's tough to cut. Um, of, of the special shells I'd like to show you. Now these are, uh, for the most part, I, I maybe have one I can sell, but these are very special. And they're super rare. It's this one here. This is a, a shell here. And it's very heavy. It's like that. And they're from Brazil. You see? See the skirt on that? It's huge. It's like as big as your head. Bigger than your head. Look, it blocks my head completely. It's massive. And it's very heavy. And the hole here is, is kind of difficult to cut and it's difficult to blow. I'll, I have one that I've cut here. I'll show you that. Uh, which one? This one here. Here. This is that shell. And as you see, it's. Uh, it has this big, 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 huge skirt here and an opening here and it's heavy and you blow it like this. This is the Tricornus gigant giganticus, I think it's called. This one here. It's, it's, it's like three kilos, maybe. Aiden, I have a question for you. Um, oh, sorry, so I, 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 I missed. It's the Tricornus goliath. Not gigantic, but goliath in the same frame, but close, yeah. Aiden, I yes. have a question for you. Um, so I notice sometimes people will put like mouthpieces onto their shells, um, like from a trumpet or a, I don't know. Um, do you have any opinion about that? Uh, well, I don't have anything like that. You don't need to, you don't feel the need. I think sometimes you can make a mistake uh, cutting this. And then you have to build up a kind of neck with anything, with plaster, with something, with epoxy. And you can put a trumpet mouthpiece in there and save the shell if it's been over cut, if it's too big. That one that, that Don's got looks all huge. Is that really too big? Is that too big, Don? Uh, your microphone's cut. Yeah, you, you, you're cut. There, there. No, it's Unmute. cut. Hold on, cut. hold on. Unmute. Muted myself. No, no, ah, there. Right, unmuted. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You made it yourself. Yeah, I, I can unmute well, myself here. You okay. made it. <laughs> it looks anyway, too big to me. It looks too big. Yeah. The hole. Yeah, I can't. I cannot get my hand in there. Never first, mind so about your hand for the moment. Like what right. about your mouth? You're, it's, I'm talking oh, about your well, mouth, Don. You well, you know, I used to play French horn and trumpet, oh, okay. so uh, I can play with almost any size. 
I see. It doesn't okay. bother me. And you can play out on the left side, the middle, the right side. Or true, true. Plays. Aiden plays out of both sides of his mouth at one time. <laughs> I don't know this how, is a how very, to take that. I'm not sure uh, how to take oh, that. I'm not, oh, oh, sorry. But get, show them. Show them how you play. This is like special. And uh, uh, I like to well, have a left and a right-handed conch, but you can't get them. They're so expensive. No, but the left-handed conchs are, are ridiculous. Florida, right? If you, want you to blow, if you want to blow two at the same time, the angle of the, uh, the cut has to be sloping, you see? Mm. It has to have a slope on it. So these shells, they kind of fit together because they're, yeah. they're shaped like that. Yeah. They have a shape so you can kind of spiral them down to each other. And then you can possibly blow them. Oh, yeah, you got it. I got to get, get in practice. But you could only do that with a shell that's pointed because you have to put them together. It's difficult. I need to practice doing that a little. But these are my own shells, and uh, yeah, it's, um, yeah, they, they go to see how nicely they fit together like that. But a, a shell like, uh, this would be a bit more difficult because you'd have to, well, you can do it. Anything's possible. Uh, the other shell I want to show you that one from Brazil. It's a rare shell. That particular one, uh, those two were collected in 2005. So that was, uh, well, however long that was, 15 years ago. Um, you cannot export that shell from Brazil anymore. It's, it's uh, forgive, forbidden. Now the other shell, one of the shell I wanted to show you is this one. This is from South America, from uh, like uh, Peru. It's a beautiful shell. It's very heavy. I've only got this one and this is mine. And um, you see pictures of this shell, that the Mayans, yeah, the Mayan uh, play the Maya Mayan play this shell, and they engrave it. But it, it is a, a very beautiful shell, and I'm sorry, I, I I really apologize. I've forgotten the name of it, but it's something else. Uh, it's very heavy. Again, it's got to weigh two kilos. This you can see maybe all the layers, the different layers that go to make this shell. It's powerful. It's super, super powerful. Uh, that's, but it's for your uh, visually, it's beautiful. And then we've got, I must show you uh, the Hindu shell, the Indian shell. You know that one? That's the, the traditional chunka, this one, the chunka from, uh, from India. You see these all over India, Tibet. It's also very heavy, this shell. And um, you see them on the internet all the time. Sometimes it's, uh, it's about, the, 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 they sell them for 60 or 70, 75 pounds, that one. And I have one that I got from a sound healer in um, sound therapist in Switzerland here. It's a special shell and it's also like the one I just played, it's very powerful. That's that shell, it's, just, it's called a chunker. It's very, very heavy, super heavy, super thick. How much is that one? Not for sale. Uh. <laughs> I have two. That little one I showed you and the one I just played, this one. But these are readily available on the internet. They sell them 
that you buy them uh, in, in and they come from India. Are Surprisingly already, enough. Aiden, are they already um are they already cut for for blowing or are you, are you talking about just getting the shell? No, they're cut for blowing. Okay. Do you have a website reference? Uh no. No, mainly because there are a lot of people in India who are not very conscious about the environment. Right. And they take lots of those shells. They take little tiny shells like this big and they make jewelry out of them. And the Indian shops, they, they just take from the ocean and um, they really should grow. It should be left to grow and reproduce. And I, I, I don't buy from shops at all. Uh, that is that shell there is 30 years old. I got it from a Buddhist in England who was had it a long time. He bought it in England, in, in India. So that little one. And the other one I, I got from a sound healer in Switzerland who passed away. And I, I bought it from his daughter. And that's probably, uh, that's, that shell is probably about 75 years old. Now here we have an interesting shell. Now I've got a coat hanger stuck into it here, you see? It's, a, it, it's look how, how deep it goes, the coat hanger is in there. <laughs> look, it's like this long. So there's a hole in here, in here of the shell. Do you see, can you see the shell well? You see, it's covered in worms, worm holes. It's very, very super old, this shell, very old. You see, it's, it's, it's uh, can you see the, 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 the how, how the worms have just eaten it up? Yeah, and now look at the edge of it. Do you see all these layers? There must be like 20 different layers here of the shell. This is, I don't know how long it takes to lay down this, but it's all rotten and it was black when I got it. And I did put it in bleach until it whitened it and bleached it up. But as you see, it's very, very scarred. Now this has holes in it, as you see, by this coat hanger going inside of it. Yeah, these are holes inside the shell. And I will stop, put some, some plaster of Paris in some of these holes because when you blow it, I have to cover with my fingers the holes and I can get a sound out of it. But I, I can feel the air coming into, into my face because there are a few other holes. But if I don't cover the hole, it won't blow. Oh, bro, it's very difficult. Um, there are also here in this is a crack. It, I think air is coming from there also. So this shell, it could be like have been living for fifty to a hundred years and then died, and and then rolled in the ocean and rolled and just like uh, eaten by the worms, everything. And it's got a sister. I bought them at the same time. This is the sister that isn't cut. And as you see, it hardly looks like a shell. It kind of looks like a stone. And you see how eaten it up, eaten it is. You see all the holes here and everything. And it's also very, uh, got lots of layers there. But this shell, um, it's barely a shell. It looks like a brick. I've not cut it yet, but I'm, I think I will. But in itself, it's a, it's a museum piece, I think, in itself. It's so old. That's that art one, yeah. This one here, this is a helmet con covered in, I don't know whether you can see that. You see the barnacles? Can you see that? Yeah. It's covered, it's covered in barnacles all over it. I like it. I, I kind of, it has character, this, this, I like, I quite like it, but it has those barnacles all over it. 
and as you see it's not cut yet. Uh, this one here, this is an anomaly. This is an anomaly because it only has one here and it's perfect but it should have another two. You see how uneven it is. It's just, it just forgot to grow this one and this one, which is kind of interesting. Well, didn't you say that, the, Aiden, didn't you say that the small knuckles are female and the large knuckles are male? Yeah, but as you see, they, don't you see that this looks like something's missing here? Maybe it's a herm hermaphrodite. Hermaphrodite. <laughs> Oh, I was thinking I that too. I never thought about <laughs> that, but yeah, yeah, I guess it could do. Could be, yeah, could be, but it's interesting, yeah. So it's perfectly, it's smooth here. It's, it's not like it's fallen off or anything, or maybe it got eaten off or knocked off and then regrew or healed. It's healed over here. I don't know, but that's, that's kind of an, an interesting anomaly, that one. I have a question. Can you hear? Yes. Yes, John. They they say there are seven oceans, but uh, Aiden, is aren't there more different families, like uh, from the like the Indian Ocean or the Australian Ocean? How yeah, many there's... different families are there? Well, that that drawing that we shared right at the beginning, I think there are like twelve or fourteen different really? colors on that map. So there, and that, that's. They're all different shells. Yeah. Not that one. Mm -hmm. mm. Yeah, the globe. Uh huh. The map of the world. Uh, yeah, yeah, I'm looking for it now. Yeah. I, I've always wanted to get a conch from every ocean. Uh, yes. A blowable so that I could play it. Of uh, course, yeah. So that, I figured well, that, that there, are, there are, what, how many oceans are there? Yeah. It Seven appears so. here that there's 16 different areas that this- 16, you see, yeah. 16. Ooh, ooh. Well, That's a lot. I wanted to show you lot. another. This is another anomaly of in conch shells. Can you see? Now this one here has a very large wing here. You see that, that's that? A, it's, wow. it's a wing here. But wow. it also has, it has this massive hole in here. I don't know whether that this is here. This is the coat hanger. It's got this big hole. It goes right in there. Uh -oh. And it's, it's conch shell missing in here. But it's still okay in here. It just happens to have a hole here. But hmm. it still blows perfectly. That hole goes all the way through to the end here. Here. So it wow. doesn't affect the, the the actual shell itself it just didn't grow properly <laughs> So that's another anomaly here, that type here. Let's see what else. Yeah. Any questions? Does anybody have any questions? Uh, D, are you with us? Well, Aiden, Aiden, we've got we've got about uh, twelve minutes left. Really? Say, yeah, it's isn't that fantastic? Wow. Time flies when you're con on the conctastic Sunday. <laughs> I'm not, I'm not yeah, gonna yeah. get over and conquerful. Yeah, can, can I? Uh, we have. Can I break in? Can I break in here at this point? This is a little time. Um, we want to continue this on. This is just the first chapter. Uh, there are so many things that are fascinating about the shells, also about your relationship, how did you meet your first shell, you see. And um, we also want to do an experiment, which is uh, how can we open up our mics, those of you who have shells, 
blow the shells and yet not have too much noise problems. That means you would have to break, go <laughs> off a ways, wouldn't you? And you might even want to blow your conch into the gong like Aiden does, so that it yeah. can be an echo through, through uh -huh. eternity uh, like uh -huh. that. So there's a lot of different techniques yeah. that we play. Yeah, and also, are. there's a language that's yes. called the conch talk. Uh, how that's do you, uh, it's somewhat like Morse code. Yeah. And so you develop a language between you and the other person so that you have a secret communication. Mm -hmm. Anyway, I just want to throw that in. The time is running out, Aiden. Yeah, it's a great communication uh, tool. If you go to music festivals and you've lost, you've lost your partner, you want to know where they are, you pull out your conch shell, give it a blast, and then you hear they have their conch shell and they give it a blast, and then pretty soon you'll be able to find each other. Because mm -hmm. people don't would... take, I always take a conch shell. This is my, uh, this is my festival conch shell. <laughs> it's a very tiny little. Let's hear uh, it, play it, play it, Aiden. This, this is a chunker from India, traced from Tibet, this one. Play it? Mm -hmm. Yeah. The smaller they get, the higher they get. That would be good for in a crowd. Yeah, this is also from Tibet. This is ancient. It's an antique. Uh, it's very old. This black is, is tar from the fire in, um, in Tibet. This is a, a spider conch. This is super old. I, don't, I can't oh. tell you how old, but it's super old. It's very interesting. I've had this like 25 years or more. Might have even been my first conch shell, I'm not sure. But it's very well worn, the spider conch. Yeah. And the other one, I want this one, is a horse conch. Oh, I didn't show you the horse conch. I need to show you that from Florida. So this is a horse conch. The horse conch is... This guy. This is the horse conch. It's got a nice color on the inside. Yeah. And I have one that hasn't been cut somewhere. This hasn't been cut yet. And fortunately, uh, you're gonna, I'm going to lose the color on the top here. Mm -hmm. But it's a nice shell. Good looking do you have shell. A, do you have a left-handed conch? I don't have one. You keep on asking me, Don. You, they're like hen's teeth. They're like hen's teeth. It's very super, super rare. And if I could, did have one, it'd be worth like 500 pounds or more. Mm -hmm. 25 years ago, I bid on, on the eBay for one and I, I lost it. I, I bid $160 and uh, I missed it. I didn't bid enough. I was really sorry I did that. But anyway. Mm -hmm. Oh, by the way, I need to tell you this. This here is not a conch shell. This is a whelk. You'll see them on the internet very cheap. That's a whelk. This also is a whelk. Do you see how it's, it's got nothing in there? It's empty. It's just got one spiral and then it's finished. You, can you see that? So this is a whelk, it's not a conch. And this is also a whelk, very lightweight, very light. Uh, you, 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 if you see one for sale, don't buy it because it won't sound. Okay, this is the horse conch. Uh, uh, Pleuroploca gigantea, Florida. <laughs> Now the best way to buy a shell is to come to my conch shell here and say, I like the look of that one, let me try it. I know Hal, Hal, I know you're in America and, and Lola too, but if you're local, you can come to my place and choose a shell 
And Debbie, he spawns up. It's the only way. That's a lovely shell. That's nice. That. I love that shell. So, what else is there to talk about? Um, oh, there's also, you've got these. You've got, uh, this is a special one, but, you know, this is a, a cow horn. Okay. This, this is a horn from a cow, which I, I dressed up with a few cowrie shells, and it has a hole in the end. Like the shofar, the shofar is from a goat, I think. Correct me if I'm wrong. A ram. Is from, is it from a ram? Oh, okay. Cool. This is, I think, I believe this is from a cow. And as is this one here, this is from India. This is like a flat, uh, it's kind of flat. Oh. So they all make a similar sound to the conch. It's very strong. I wonder what my neighbors think sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> I've got one neighbor around the corner. She's about, got to be 400 yards away at least. And she confided in my next door neighbor that she likes, she likes the gong. But she can't stand the conch shell. <laughs> I thought, what's wrong with the conch shell? <laughs> she just doesn't like it. But you come across those kind of people. They just don't like things. They don't like it. So anyway. Aiden. Aiden. Yes, yeah. Have you ever seen this kind of shell? Uh, that's, that looks like it's man-made. I'm kidding, that's porcelain. Yeah, I was gonna say, yeah. I do have a porcelain shell in the bedroom. Yeah. And did, if anybody saw that shell on my, uh, on sounding shells, the gold one, wow, what a fantastic thing that is. That was a birthday present. I treated myself and I bought this. It's like a museum piece. It's, go it's all gold. Uh, you might, you look in this thing. And it's actually a real shell, but I don't know really how they made it. But it's spectacular. And it sits there on my, uh, on my stereo, actually. And I love it. It's a, it was a piece of whimsy because it, it doesn't do anything. It just uh, looks spiral. It's got that magic spiral. It's very inspiring, <laughs> I think. So yeah, it's been lovely to see you. Hal, have you got anything to say? Just a quick question. I, I've seen things on eBay that says green turbo shell, green turbo. No, they're, they're tiny. They don't they're tiny. Yeah, they, they're like this big. They're like, they, they're very beautiful. Don't get me wrong. And they polish them so that the mother of pearl comes out and they're really beautiful. They're quite rare, but they'll fit in your hand like this. I mean, it's, if you're a shell collector and to be quite honest, you could do worse than to be collecting shells because they are beautiful. I have this book here, you know, I mean, there's shells, shells, 200,000 different kinds of shells, different ones all the time. And if you're going to have a collection, uh, a shell collection, you can maybe even go on the beach and make a shell collection, not a conch shell. Aiden, do you have um, near you that cool um, instrument that you created from the seaweed, from the kelp that you collected on the beach? No. There, um, I'm just thinking because a few people haven't been at the Gong Master trainings with you. Um, Aiden took these long tubes of seaweed from the California coast. Kelp, and, kelp. Kelp, kelp. And he, you, dr you dried it out over six months. You hung them up? Uh, two months it took. But uh, two months in California, not two months in England. Yeah. <laughs> and they sound different. phenomenal. Yeah, it dries out in California. It never dry out here, never. Mm. <laughs> so yeah, you've seen them. They look like they're long. They're like five, 10 feet long and they're hairy at the end. Yeah. 
and you just hang it on the nail on a nail on a log cabin in California for a couple of months, and it's ready to go. It dries out. Don's and talking. Oh, uh, you also have tube worms. Remember, we used to have little tube worms that we would blow from the ocean. Yeah, they work. I've tried that. You can make a sound from an ordinary uh, garden snail if you're clever. You can make a whistle with it. Yeah. So what else is there? Well, uh, you've seen those. You've seen the girl. Oh, the big shell. Okay. This is the big one. Oh, God. This is it. Whoa. So this is the big one. Can you still see me? Yeah. So I sit down for this one. This shell here is uh, 24 inches. And it was so beautiful. And it is so beautiful, a shell. It's just magnificent that I didn't want to cut it. So what I did, I put a, a hole in the side. You see that? So I, I wanted to retain the apex of the shell. So you could put a hole in the side there. It, it was tricky. It was tricky to put. But then you can, it's, it's, you blow it from the side. <clears throat> but it is a big one. I got to get a really wet lip so to get a good purchase. That's the Queen Mary, I call her. <laughs> I call her the <laughs> Queen Mary. <laughs> Just like a ship. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it's, it's magnificent. It's the largest gastropod in the world is the Australian syrinx. You know. They grow up to one meter long. A shell, one meter. This is, a, this is 24 inches, so another, imagine another, what, 10, 16 inches on top of that. Mm. That would be rare. Oh. But that's the, big, that's the biggest one in my collection, this one. You oh. know, our time, Aiden, our time is up for today, but there was okay. one you just did, which I thought was fantastic, especially for people who have never kind of played around with the sounds of the conch is there's that blowing that you have the high and pitched blowing but also what you did which is when you create that sort of wind ocean sound just oh, this, yes well this is too big to do that with really you're talking about the simple Usually at the workshops, there are those people who struggle with blowing the conks. And rather than get them to play in a gong bath and make <coughs> horrible sounds, like, you know, sounds like they were really, <coughs> we just get them, those people who can't blow the conch shell yet, hopefully everybody will by the end of the, uh, the, the workshop, we get them to just do the ocean sound. And you can use that's beautiful in the gong bath anyway, even if you can blow the shell, it's a, it's a beautiful sound. And this one. There it he is. What you got there, Hal? What you got? A triton. Oh, a nice triton. Now he's, he's got a string around it. Do you see that? Ah. Now, when I sell the shells, 
I ask for an option. If you like, I can drill a hole in, in, in the shell here. I uh, drill a hole and you can hang feathers from it and beads and personalize oh. your own shell. It becomes a little more shamanic. But there's no way you can tie anything onto it. It's very difficult to put the, the string on it so that it holds because it's a funny shape. But I do ask people if they want, I will drill a hole in the, in the side of the shell somewhere so that you can hang your own, you know, talismans or something like that from it. I like that. It's a nice thing. So is there anything else? That was fantastic. Um, so oh. we're over the time, but I have to say that was quite enjoyable. And I wouldn't mind uh, having more conch Sundays in our future, Aiden. Thank you for opening up your sounding shell shock to us today. I forgot to show you the Murex, this shell, which is quite spectacular. Wow. It's very spiky. It's super spiky. And it's not cut yet, but that's the Murex conch shell. It's quite nice. It's nice and pink inside and it will be cut at some point but it's a really spiky shell it looks like it has a nice chamber as well it's not bad is it not bad that little one that i showed you that wasn't cut here this one uh it, it, it's it's been knocked around a little bit it's a bit of an ugly duckling is this one that's why i didn't take it any further but this one is quite uh, quite a looker, you could say. Anyway, so there's that. I think, did I show you everything? I think I showed you more or less everything. I don't think, you're supposed, to say that. I think you're supposed to say, that's all for today. Come back next month. We'll look at more stuff. <laughs> <laughs> well, I don't know about that. We haven't no, scratched the surface with the, the no. cheaper ones. The cheaper we ones are the queen ones. We, the, we really need to continue this now because there's so many different things to that unfold from this. So next time that Aiden comes on, we're going to have Aiden uh, with his singing bowl. And then we're going to revisit the conch world. Uh, as we talk about how do we use them in performance because well that's what i would like to have a person here lying down on a massage table yeah, 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 and yeah, saying yeah. okay this is what we do with the conch shell in sound yeah. therapy one to one but these wow. days it's not possible i'd have to have a blow up doll or something i don't <laughs> have one I don't have one <laughs> Well, uh, well, we have a big occasion coming up shortly. And yeah. Aiden is such a big part of this. Uh, we're going to have everybody now should have a conch shell. Oh, absolutely. Practice. And then yeah. on that date, we want, we're going to be all hooked up together. We're all going to blow our conchs. Now, what's going to happen? You see the map behind me here? Yeah. All right. So I'm over here. I'm in New York. I can blow my conch here. Aiden can blow his conch, and maybe we'll tune them so they have a bead tone between them. And we'll be able to transverse this Atlantic Ocean back and forth like this, faster almost th than the speed of light. So we want to work out some new ways to use the conchs uh, internationally, I guess. That way. Thanks, I think uh, we've not talked about the uh, the fact that it's an instrument of exorcism, either. Yeah. Oh. We, next time, uh, please tune in. Tell the people about. There's a lot of people who have shells out there uh, who are not part of our our group here, but I think that once they realize that we can have all the con players tune in, it'll be really fantastic because we must work towards the around the world conch blowing that goes with around the world bowl playing and around the world gong playing for these occasions coming up. Okay, Donna. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you, Hal. Thanks, Lola. Thanks, Dee. Thank